welcome you to the next session lecture 9 of embed software testing in the previous session we had learned uh, the v model life cycle how it is the basic elements of that to uh, to can uh, v model uh, typical uh, elements uh, requirements design low level design and implementation on par with this we have a testing staggered on the right hand side so we will develop the tests as per the horizontal line so for the requirements high level test or acceptance test we will write for the design we will write system test for the low level units we will write integration test for the source code we have the unit testing and uh, we also learned that uh, for any embedded uh, software development and testing so we have a prototyping and formal life cycle prototyping what we do is we will uh, define our own prototyping iterations where we define realize and evaluate uh, the various uh, items of the embedded software life cycle and that will be iterated till it is finalized so at the end of this uh, prototype we have a finalized uh, SRS, design document, source, test case, test procedure, and a set of uh, test result. And also, we learned that uh, for each stage of the life cycle, there has to be an entry and exit criteria. Uh, we know that uh, the conditions that must be satisfied for entry and exit, based on that only, it can move to the next stage. The formal uh, life cycle also we studied. Where we picked up a sample uh, specification design coding, on par with that uh, testing, integration testing, and unit testing. So this looks like a V shape. That's why it's called a V life cycle. There are different uh, models that are allowed, that are used, uh, such as waterfall, iterative, agile, all that. In general, uh, in the embedded industry, they follow V model. so that is what we learned in the session 8 and uh, in this session uh, we focus on uh, some of the processes that are followed for each of the stage so each stage will have a process the process elements are objective scope entry inputs outputs and exit criteria what are those uh, objectives what are those scope so how do we define entry what is output output exit etc so taking an example of assistance uh, this plan and this cases uh, we identify or define these uh, main elements for objective we say that uh, to prepare acceptance test plan in line with the srs and as per the business uh, acceptance criteria scope is applicable for embedded software project you can define a uh, name or project name where acceptance testing is uh, done from the user perspective the scope is only for the customer or with the along with the client something like that we will have it in the scope entry criteria tells that we need a baseline the software requirements specification with 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 the help of which we will uh, satisfy the objective and availability of the plan i mean the plan will have all the tools environment and the schedule identified with the pointers so that will be an entry or the entry criteria that is identified and uh, once we have the entry criteria there are various inputs that are used baseline software requirement specification baseline the project plan so this will be the input and uh, what is the outcome of the acceptance test plan of this is that baseline test plan and traceability and once it is complete we exit out of this phase and go to the next phase that is about an example of a uh, to one uh, acceptance test plan uh, creation and uh, preparation we'll go in detail uh, with the definition of uh, each of this in the next uh, slides
Okay. Uh, for example, uh, a DVD player or a workstation, PlayStation, etc. So there, what they do is uh, they define uh, three levels: high level, low level, and uh, and the next is uh, the output level or the conceptual level of exiting. So high level, what they do is they define the concept, they will gather the requirement, they will do the design. Uh, with this, they will uh, end the high level phase, and the next level uh, life cycle uh, will have implementation and integration. These two combined. Once this this is done, they will directly go with the V and V. That is validation and verification. They will take all these in inputs uh, right from the high level to the low level, and they do the V and V. And uh, once the V and V is complete, the product is both fixed working. And it can be deployable. Once it is there, they'll go for maintenance. The interesting thing is that a consumer electronics product have to be maintained well, and uh, there is a supporting mechanism that is required from the organization towards the customer or the clients. So they will add a maintenance as one of the product phase towards the end. So this is an example of uh, consumer electronics product lifecycle. In general, uh, for embedded software testing, entry and exit criteria how they are used. In general, I'm talking about if you want to do a software testing defined for an embedded system, the entry should have SRS design code minimum, and there should be baseline. The entry should have a test plan, a specification signed off. That means in order to test, we cannot uh, go without the test plan. We need to have a test plan. And the test specification identifies the test program and procedures, and they should be signed off. That means they should be approved by the test team as well as the uh, the qualifying authority or the QA team. Along with that, as per the test plan, the test setup and tools should be configured. That means they should be available for the usage, and that will be consistently used across the testing lifecycle till the testing is complete. And in order to do the testing, we need to have a software build. On the software build, we will apply the testing mechanism with the help of the test set. So these are the entry criteria for doing the software testing. As an outcome of this life cycle, what is the exit criteria? What is the exit test execution completion along with the test logs and measured outputs? So we say testing cycle is complete when we have the exit of test execution completed with test logs or reports generated and any measurement that we have done as an output of this testing activity. All tests should be reported either a pass or fail. That means each test needs to have a reporting whether those tests are passed or those tests are failed. And uh, whatever the artifacts we report should be baseline. Baseline means we will stop at a stage where say we say that it is complete with the identification baseline number. We will take up what is baseline and all that when we go through the configuration management uh, session of our configuration. So, in general, these entry and exit are very important. Okay, so we'll take an example of one uh, testing life cycle. So we'll touch base on what are the elements that an automotive testing process and process takes it to complete the testing life cycle. Go through automotive testing phases and uh, processes. What are those? See, basically, automotive testing phase uh, is categorized into five phases. You can see system and requirement study, test planning, test execution and defect management, package and release, and test closure. 
uh, as i said uh, in earlier session in the previous session that software development life cycle has development as well as testing so this is uh, in particular talking about only the testing that is testing life cycle so do not get uh, confused with uh, the development life cycle testing life cycle etc it's all part of the integral process of the entire software test sorry in the software system so that has the development cycle as well as testing life cycle here i am uh, looking into the testing life cycle only okay so automotive testing phases and processes so we have five phases system requirement uh, and study test planning test execution and defect management package and release test closure this for a typical automotive testing uh, for example take a engine control unit or a telematic system or any braking control system or any vision systems etc as part of the automotive uh, specifically cars okay so each one will touch base so what do we do in uh, system and the requirement study and uh, what do we do in test planning what do we do in test execution and defect management and what do we do in package and release and uh, each one has its own process system and requirement study you say you see it in the arrow there is a process defined for test execution and defect management uh, that also can have automation as uh, told earlier you have multiple scripts running one shot you can automate it as a batch and uh, that is uh, nothing but test automation and uh, that also has a process which we can apply for the test execution as part of the test execution and defect management process once this test execution is completed we are going to have a release mechanism a release process we do a package and release of the product so that also is part of the test phase how we are going to do it finally we end with a test closure process how are we going to close the testing life cycle okay so each one will uh, take up okay the first one is being a system and a requirement study process as i said earlier we need to have objective scope entry exit and between entry and exit we will identify inputs and outputs okay for system and requirement study process what are those objective to gather the requirement specification for testing to understand the user requirement for testing. I guess it is a straightforward, uh, simpler one. So we will gather the requirements of the system under test. We will uh, understand or analyze the requirement. So this is very important term. We need to have an thorough knowledge or system knowledge of the embedded system which is under test. Then we define the scope. So whatever uh, the scope of the testing. So we say. applicable to embedded automotive testing type product that is uh, whatever we do this objectives is applicable only for the particular testing of the particular product and we have entry criteria as an extra element in the process testing activity kick off project go ahead awarded by customer that means we will enter into this phase of system and requirement study once customer says yes go ahead with this or uh, if it is a internal uh, project or the product uh, there is a approving authority or a go ahead authority who will say you can start so testing activity is uh, kicked off on that day where the entry is done once we have the entry we are going to have all the inputs or the inputs that are identified what are those inputs it could be a customer inputs that is a customer input specification it could be a contract given by the customer we will identify all the input material and customer supplied material as i said as part of the contract and any of the below or all of the below whatever it is usually it will be a software requirement specification it will be a design document here a design document is something which is been as a outcome of the development phase functional specification what are the functionality that this product is going to have 
and any business requirements document from the customer perspective and any user manual that customer wants or customer has a uh, given or the development team has developed and test cases and scripts here is not that uh, the test cycle test like testing life cycle uh, test cases it is a sample test cases from uh, similar product earlier or customer has anything to validate this product those things are part of this and the application prototype products equipments to be tested that means the actual product or the actual end target system or the actual application which needs to be tested this is a very important input for us to study and another thing is engineering or market requirements list that means what are the engineering requirements it is not just enough to have a srs for the tester or for the developer he needs to have an engineering element as an understanding of the product under development or test so he needs to have a marketing item material that means requirement so what is that end customer is going to have it once this product is deployed into the customer or the end user all this will be considered in terms of inputs development or identification of the inputs the next one is outputs output of this activity is test strategy that means how am i going to test it how means it is not that practical steps or it is not that uh, uh, real steps of uh, what values i am going to use at all overall i know that what system is i have understood how the system is going to behave what are the functionalities it has what are the uh, customer expected uh, our customer expectation has uh, in terms of the product that is going to be deployed in the market considering all that how i am going to test it as a defect, defect free product uh, that strategy will uh, produce as an output of this activity that means it could have multiple uh, methods or approaches it is for different functionalities or it is for different uh, set of requirements or the prototypes or the products all this will be laid out as a document which is nothing but a strategy document so that is the outcome of this system and requirement study process we can also list out an example suppose some analog uh, set of requirements or a functionality is there how i am going to test it uh, what is that uh, strategy that i will adopt for testing those uh, features so that all will be part of this document so that is nothing but test strategy document and this test strategy has to be signed off by the customer if it is customer driven or some authority who is going to approve it uh, for him or the test team or whoever has done the study process has to submit the strategy and he will review and approve it so that is the exit criteria so once again we have objective of this system and requirement study process we will gather the requirement we will understand what the system is and uh, the scope is to test it or a testing type of a product entry criteria will have a kick off and uh, uh, go ahead from the approving authority or the customer the inputs that are required for this study these are all customer reports uh, any material srs design documents from the development team or the developed product functional specification business requirements user manual test cases scripts and sample scripts if they have done for doing an initial testing at the customer end or the developer end that also can be input and from the engineering perspective any inputs that are required that also will be an input then we have the outputs as a strategy document and exit a sign off from the internal customer or the real customer so that is about system requirement study process which is nothing but the first phase of the testing life cycle it is something like a study process okay the next one once we study and understand the system and identify different things what is uh, it is going to require for conducting the testing we are going to plan it how i am going to do it and how means what sort of a planning that i need to have 
in order to do the testing. So the planning also again has the objective, scope, entry, input, output, exit. The objective is here prepare test plan detailing the test approach, strategy, types of testing, entry and exit criteria for test execution. Prepare detailed test cases for customer requirements. That means test cases uh, identified for customers inputs will be part of the planning. We'll identify samples uh, with details, how it looks like, what is it going to have. All this will be part of the planning process. Then we'll uh, define the scope. Again, uh, it's for the embedded uh, automotive testing type. Uh, how we are going to enter into this uh, test planning process is baseline test strategy document available or approved by the customer. So you remember the strategy is an output of the previous uh, phase where we have done the study and uh, understanding of the system that will be an entry here and uh, that is an input as well. Test management tool anything that we want to manage with the help of a tool that also can be an input and the below are the multiple inputs that is the SRS design function specification, business requirements, user manual, test cases and uh, uh, any scripts given by the customer and uh, application uh, features, prototypes, equipments that are to be tested from the customer perspective. This all will go into the planning process because I need to plan what I am going to deploy, how I am going to execute, all this will be laid out as a plan. And the output of this activity will have baseline test plan and uh, test cases signed off by customer. That means I am going to develop few samples with some details and that should be agreed by the customer or the internal uh, management. And we will also develop a sort of a traceability, the traceability will uh, map into the test strategy with the requirements and how I am going to run the test that I have uh, laid out, test run plan it is called, it is a small uh, run plan uh, that will identify uh, the preconditions, execution mechanism and uh, the outputs that is expected. I guess so the sample test plan we went through in one of the session. Maybe I will uh, open up again uh, sometime later in this session or if time permits or the next session. So exit criteria is approval of test management plan and test cases by customer and the stakeholders within the organization. So this is about a test planning. So we have gone through two phases of the testing life cycle, one is a system and requirement study, other one is a test planning. The next one is the most important thing, the important one that is a test execution and test management. Okay, so this has a, the test execution and defect management process has the opportunity to identify and track and track the defects. That means here uh, basically we are going to execute as a result of execution definitely there will be some issues or defects, how those defects are going to be mitigated or how those defects are going to be fixed and how they are going to be tracked. All this will be part of this objective and the scope is again for testing the automotive test product. Here entry criteria is baseline test plan. The previous cycle usually it will be a previous cycle uh, exit. Uh, the output will be an entry criteria here. Test cases reviewed and approved. Baseline test plan. Availability of customer supplied material because uh, I need to execute on the end target. Definitely I need to have it as a target based testing system. So definitely we are going to have uh, the required material as per the plan. The inputs that are required are identified hardware, software, tools, technical uh, material, test cases, test data, test on plan. So all this will be required because with the help of this only I am going to execute. The outputs of this activity is uh, updated test plan, 
updated traceability matrix. As I said, traceability matrix is uh, the important aspect of the testing lifecycle because I need to trace each of the requirements how I have tested, how I have covered in terms of what sort of a test. All this will be part of the traceability matrix. And also, we come up with the test cases and scripts as an outcome of this activity of test execution and defect management. Exit criteria we have all the defects logged and reported to the customer. It could be an internal development team also or internal management who will route all these defects to a fix by the development team, or if it is an issue with the requirements or the engineering level from customer. Then customer needs to fix it. We have to log to him. There are situation situations where some of the tests will result in modifying the requirement, or some of the results failed will result in modifying the product to an extent such that it can be testable and deployable. And all the testing which Cannot continue. Like I have uh, here, uh, I'll take a typical example. I have uh, suppose uh, some uh, hundred requirements to be tested. In that, I have completed about uh, sixty percent. That means uh, sixty requirements I have uh, covered. Now I found out that fifty percent of this requirement have resulted in bugs. Let's say. It need not be 50. 50 percent is too high. Say 20. 20 percent of the tested requirements have bugs, meaning that there are twelve requirements have failed. Am I right? Yes. So twelve requirements have failed. That means this is a sampling, which the testing team has to consider. Or based on the sampling that is defined in the test plan, as per the test plan. So we will take a call. Our testing team will take a call either to stop the test or start the test or continue the test. So this is a very important aspects of testing that is called toll gate. Toll gate is nothing but A sampling criteria wherein a decision is taken whether to continue that activity or the product is enough to take up to the next level. So, that is what the target is. So, based on the plan, this will be taken. The decision for target is taken care. So, that is what the exit criteria to stop certain criteria whether it is correct or not or to continue. So that is what is about this execution and defect management process. So this is the third phase what we have seen, and as I said, test automation also could be there, where we do the execution with the help of batch execution, batch script running, and all that. So automation will definitely will help in. Hello. Yes. Test test automation will help in speeding the the process of execution. It also helps in manual intervention and any defects that are due to. Manual errors. Can be avoided. That means, uh, more you automate, the chance of injecting human errors are less. That is why we use automation. So, for the automation, we can define an automation process wherein uh, we can have a small entry put output exit criteria for that separately. I am not told here, maybe we can take it up as an exercise when we do the practical sessions. 
So that is about uh, the third life cycle, which is nothing but test execution and defect management, uh, test automation and process also can be defined as part of the, this uh, activity. So that's a very important activity of all the testing life cycle. Okay, next is uh, the package. Once we have once we are done with that test execution and defects, we are good to go for package and release process. So what are the things that it has? So objective is process for preparation and execution of automation test steps, preparation process of test data for parameterization in automated automation tools. Oh, I'm sorry, this is not about the package and release. The first one I've already listed out the automation process as I depicted here. All this can be applied in this slide. Uh, here, what we do is execution of automation will define uh, automation process. The objective is the preparation and execution of automation test scripts and uh, parameterization automation tools. That means, what are the parameters? That will be used. Those parameters are usually a test data uh, inputs and test data outputs. All this will be fed into the automation tools. Uh, automation tools can be done with the help of uh, Python or uh, any of the DOS batch execution. All this will have a test data. Test data needs to be parameterized for each of these scripts, inputs, execution. Uh, of course, there are various uh, automation tools uh, with the help of uh, a nice uh, lab view, test stand. Uh, it is uh, together they use it usually from national instruments. Okay, that is about uh, the test uh, automation and tools that are used. Scope is same. Entry is a stable application environment. That means uh, automation. Once uh, we are ready to do the automation, we should not uh, crumble in between. That means it cannot fail. So it's difficult to uh, find out. Once we are good to run all the tests, then we are going to have a batch execution. Uh, for that, we need to have a stable environment. That means the testing environment, whatever you are going to execute. Should be stable enough to take care of all this automation. Of course, the machines, network, database, and parameters all should be set up for taking care of the test automation. Then, control the test environment where no other instances or access is made during the test. That means the performance is no com compromise of the test. Uh, the test environment is completely controlled with the help of this automation. And, uh, there is no intervention in between when uh, the execution is on. What are the inputs? Baseline test strategy. Again, the test strategy can identify what is the sort of automation and uh, test data that will be used for automation or execution. And those things will be defined in the strategy documents. So that is one of the input. That should be baseline. And test cases and tools, test data, customer supplied material. Test environment specification. It is not just enough to have a test environment in place. It is very important to have a test environment defined with a spec, and it is called a work instruction. That means a sort of a how to use the test environment because the testing team has to be independent and. Given a day, anybody having enough knowledge of the system should be able to test with the help of this defined this specification or work instruction. The output of the test automation process is test automation deliverables with testing. That means, as an output of the testing with the help of automation, we will have the results. That is an outcome of this problem. 
the exit criteria is validation and acceptance of automation test suit acceptance of automation test pack by client that means the output of the automation should be accepted by the relevant stakeholders okay now come to packaging and releasing once we are done with the testing what are the process that we follow for packaging and release of the embedded test product tested product here the objective is to ensure that the deliverable product or software packaging and release activities take place in accordance with the user requirements that means we cannot deliver the product saying that i have tested and I take it we should have a well defined process well defined the packaging mechanism packaging doesn't mean that it is a packaging with any beautiful binding or folders or something like that it is also important to document how we are going to deliver the tested product that is very important because that should be acceptable by the user and he should be able to pick as if he is a he is not having any knowledge of the intricacies of the packaged or released the product he should be able to pick it up as per the well defined instructions as per the process so that is the objective of this process scope is again the testing product of the ml system the entry criteria is software tested completely and test results are recorded and test results record means all the test results should ideally be passed basically the end user expects test results are addressed here most rate is passed for the failed ones there should be enough justifications telling that such and such features are not uh, tested uh, or i would say it's not tested it is something like justified saying that some features uh, are not tested in uh, the well defined uh, manner or the way it is uh, tested but there is enough hint saying that that defect will not occur or saying that uh, certain features are tested in a different way mechanism basically that also can be considered as passed only but enough information should be there for the other items where it is tested indirectly or using any alternate mechanism of test testing so that is the entry criteria for packaging and releasing product completed our products were ready for packaging the inputs for uh, doing the packaging and releasing is all deliverables should be available it should be baseline as per the project plan and project plan should be baseline that means project plan will be revisited uh, how it is getting done in terms of packaging and releasing requirements document design documents dependent material from customer that means whatever we have used for testing the product have to be categorized and they should be available what is the input on a given day for releasing it so that is same thing should be available before we release the product outputs the release note should be there mentioning all the release items what are the items that are released so what is the configuration information for that any version information and uh, any manual it is uh, going to point to or any work instructions how should be used all this any troubleshooting information so all this will be part of this release note i mean release note will not have the data for all this but it will have a pointer it will have a information about all these things and the packaged work product is on the output that means the output is cleanly maintained as per what is been told in the earlier process of the planning process that means such and such folders will have such and such pass results or failed results or reports to there and here where the build is there all this will be part of the work product structure that should be part of the output 
and how we exit is the delivered the delivered product or the leaves should be successfully deployed and installed at customer side. Usually, it is not just enough to send or deliver just to the customer or the end user. It should be satisfactorily working at this site. And it should be available for customer, and that's what is called as deployed successfully at the deliverable end. All the packaging and release requirements have been identified or satisfied. Successful release of software for products it means all the items that is required as per requirement should be available at customer side satisfactorily and should be running all the time. That is what we will end up with the packaging and release. Process. So that is about the fourth process. Uh, literally, it is a fifth process because we have covered up with the start of process also. So we are done with this uh, process of package and uh, release. The next one is the last process in the test, testing life cycle. That is nothing but test closure. So what it has. Test closure process has an objective of gather and come up with a mechanism for collecting inputs required for process improvement through project retrospection activities. What it means here, what we do is we have delivered the product, we have tested the product, and uh, we have got a uh, deployable uh, product available to customer. It is not just enough to just deliver and uh, see that we are done. Uh, it is very important. To come up with what we have done so far, the entire life cycle of development, it could be or testing, or it could be a sub process, or it's automation, or any feature wise bug fix, all this have to be recorded thoroughly. So, it's a very important aspect because we are going to live with embedded systems for multiple life cycles or it could be a different embedded systems or a sub system all these lessons learned is called lessons learned and other one term is very important best practices these two aspects we will record it we will have it that is an objective of this closure it is called a closure activity as part of the closure activity we record all the aspects of what we have done in the process and how we can improve on the lessons that we have learned while implementing the testing. And we are going to archive the product what we have delivered because it could be required anytime to revisit or to re deliver whatever it is. We need to have an archive as per the plan. Closure of the testing activities. That means we are going to put a full stop for all these uh, testing uh, aspects. Scope is applicable again for the product that is intended to test. And we have uh, all deliverables, uh, sorry, uh, we have uh, entity criteria in terms of all deliverables have been delivered to the customer satisfactorily. Overall product uh, project objectives have been met, including the successful uh, customer reports. Project start to end date for retrospection. That means we should retrospect what we have done. So this is a retrospection uh, meeting basically. It will be held within the team, stakeholders. Any customers involved, any feedback, all this will be considered for doing the beginning to end. We will retrospect what has happened. As a part of the retrospection, we do lessons learned, best practices, and of course, improvement. What we are going to improve. For future such projects or products, in terms of 
how it can be better utilized or better tested so that it is going to be minimized in terms of effort or it could be cycle reduction or it could be cost whatever it is. So it's very important that all this will be take considered for closure activity. Inputs is for doing all this we need a project document which we have done and we are going to baseline project plan. Uh, sorry, project plan is one of the baseline because we have defined in the project plan saying that how I am going to close it the project. Output of the test closure activities, project retrospection reports, this is a retrospection report which I think I will take up in a future sessions and this is a minutes of meeting. We you all know that uh, we have to record uh, what is the minutes that is done in the meeting. Uh, that minutes will identify uh, the discussion summary, any actions required, anything that we want to highlight. All this will be part of this outputs, and uh, of course, as part of the output of this disclosure, we will definitely have to have a feedback. Or the acceptance from the user or the customer. As I said, the customer feedback is important because that is going to feed into the next level in terms of improvement or applying to various other aspects in the organization or so it could be appreciation also what will we have done best so that we can use it we can reuse it those parts are very important and very good also the last one is exit how we are going to exit this project closure checklist there is a checklist uh, that should be completed which will be maintained in the server by the concerned people and all the applicable activities in that checklist should be closed. There should not be any open items so that the project is closed. And either we would have delivered, we have got the acceptance or the feedback. If not, we might seek as part of this closure. So, what will happen is sometimes the project deemed to be closed from an internal perspective where we have used the team. And uh, the project is delivered to customer, and the customer is yet to be uh, evaluate, evaluate the product. Or he would have done partially saying that in principle he will agree with the deliverable, but he would not have come back, come back with a complete feedback. So, in that case, what we will do is we will uh, dissolve the team, keeping uh, one or two stakeholders till we get the complete customer feedback as a point of contact. That is why this is uh, the line item told here. Customer feedback form we should send it to customer. Project learning has been recorded with you. Project folder and project server archived. As I said in the earlier step, it's an objective. The project status changed to closed. It means the database or whatever it is will be identifying project as started, in progress, open. That means the project is. Uh, Open but not doing any progress, and project is stalled or halted and closed. These are some of the project status it is called. So this should be closed. Definitely close the the one that the team will look for. So this project has to be closed in order to close this process. So that is about the test closure process of the ML testing. So this will uh, complete the automotive testing phase process as an example there are five phases so like this uh, there are different phases one for different uh, domains uh, here I have told about automotive there is a different uh, process that is involved as I said uh, consumer electronics for example. Is an example of automotive testing phases and the process. Similarly, we can apply based on the need 
for other domains like aerospace or telecom etc so one example uh, we have gone through consumer electronics uh, product life cycle okay so we will look into some of the embedded system terms and words uh, this will be growing uh, each session so i will keep adding so that uh, uh you are all aware of this because uh, this has to be there uh, any time for an ml system uh, tester test harness test bed test bench automated test equipment model based testing test steps driver fault injection and slide is uh, last but one slide is about the embedded system terms and uh, uh, testing words this uh, will keep on growing as we go through different uh, sessions because uh, these words have to be there in a tester's uh, mind because uh, uh, these are some of the common words getting used always by the tester or the embedded system developer so he needs to have an idea about these words all the time as a matter what area or what domain you work for test harness test bed test bench at model based testing test stubs test driver fault injection mcdc test hook boot software boot loader input output interface control document breakpoints simulator emulator trace profile uh, data sheet uh, for uh, arm so and microcontroller it is a bit better reference manual so called as errata identifying all the any issues or errors for the particular microcontroller uh, in circuit emulator test equipment code check static analysis dynamic analysis hex disassembly reverse engineering life cycle entry and exit criteria baseline prototyping stakeholder uh, some of this uh, we studied today maybe some more words i'll add it uh, in the next session so that uh, you can uh, understand or study those uh, words in detail so i have a question uh, for today's session uh, what are the i mean this uh, session uh, includes for the previous session also uh, i think for the previous session only these questions are applicable the current session i will add it in the next session Uh, we have studied about life cycle uh, in detail uh, about the uh, model and all that. So these questions are about that. What are the process elements that must exist? Uh, the next question is: What is the significance of prototyping life cycle? So why do why do we need a prototyping life cycle? And uh, V model. Uh, why it is called as V model? Usually, what model is typically followed for prototyping? So, uh, what model we use for uh, doing the prototyping of the embedded system development or testing? Okay, that's all about uh, today's session. So we will uh, see you in the next session.